what are you doing? I screamed in surprise. In front of me stood my husband, Aaron, holding an empty beer glass with a fierce expression. My name is Marilyn, and I'm almost 45 years old. I live together with my husband, Aaron, and our son, Raoul. My mother passed away when I was young, and my father, a single man, had raised me. Our family home is a restaurant that has been passed down for five generations. Known due to my father's good nature and skill as a chef, the restaurant has grown into a popular establishment with notoriously difficult reservations. Since I can remember, my father has been asking me to take over the restaurant. I wanted to fulfill his request because I love and respect him deeply. However, I had reasons why I couldn't inherit the restaurant. Firstly, I was terrible at cooking. Even when following recipes, the result would turn out completely different. No matter how much I practiced, I couldn't improve. Secondly, and this was a major issue, I couldn't handle customer service. I think people who say serving is easy have excellent communication skills, which I lacked severely. My communication skills were significantly subpar. Whenever I stood in front of others, my mind went blank. Making eye contact and speaking to people was impossible for me. Just taking orders would end up angering the customers. After helping out at the restaurant multiple times, I realized I was causing inconvenience by being there. I realized that I lacked the talent for customer service. With that in mind, I started considering the possibility of being useful behind the scenes. I enrolled in a business school to learn about management. That's where I met my current husband. Aaron was the complete opposite of me, always the center of his friend groups. I guess this is what they mean by having high communication skills. I always watched Aaron from afar with this thought in mind. Being socially awkward, I was naturally alone at university, but I didn't mind. However, being alone seemed to attract attention and... We're going out for drinks with everyone. Want to come along? If it's not possible, that's okay, but if you can, definitely join us. That's how Aaron approached me. Later, I heard from Aaron that he had been curious about me. You were always alone, right? And you were constantly watching me. But you never approached me or anything. That's why I got really curious. That's what Aaron said. No, it's not like I was watching you with the intention of talking to you. I was just watching you because I couldn't approach you. I said that, surprising him. It seemed like Aaron couldn't understand my behavior, but I could understand what Aaron was saying. A lonely woman constantly glancing in his direction. Of course, that would pique his interest. I declined the invitation for drinks, but it became an opportunity for us to start talking and gradually become closer. Aaron had a similar background to mine, but he has siblings. My older brother will inherit the family business, so I don't really need to study management. Well, it's just a precautionary measure, I guess. He said with a shy smile. I had an even better impression of him as a caring and family-oriented person. Aaron would talk about anything, so I also became comfortable sharing my thoughts. Naturally, I revealed that my family runs a restaurant and that I would eventually have to inherit it, along with my concerns about it. Aaron, having learned about my worries, I'll help. I'm good at customer service that you struggle with so I can assist you, he said. Huh, really? So does that mean you'll become my husband? I blurted out those words unintentionally. Yeah, I intended it as a proposal, Aaron said with a laugh. That became the starting point of our relationship. After we started dating, Aaron helped out at my family's restaurant, as he promised. He had a laid-back side, but his strong communication skills and reliability attracted me, and that's why I decided to marry him. We were happy when our child was born, but that happiness didn't last long. One day, my father suddenly collapsed. He has about six months left. When the doctor informed us of that, my mind went blank, but I didn't have time to grieve. Should I keep the restaurant open without my father, the head chef? If possible, could you continue operating the restaurant for the sake of the customers? My situation wouldn't matter to those who have made reservations. 
My father, looking worn out, said that to me, and I was troubled about what to do. I'll open the restaurant in his place, so Marilyn, stay by your father's side. With a strong tone, Aaron said those words. My father was surprised. Is it okay? It'll be a great help. The current chefs are all capable of doing the work. The quality of the food won't decline. Aaron, thank you. I'm counting on you. My father said repeatedly, bowing his head to Aaron. Suppressing the urge to cry, I also thanked Aaron multiple times. Without any hesitation, we entrusted everything about the restaurant to Aaron. This is the beginning of the incident. We noticed something was amiss about a month later. When I stopped by the restaurant after my father's hospital visit, Excuse me, may I have a moment? The employee approached me and said that. The employee is a woman in charge of catering and she has been working for us for five years. You're the person who came in as a substitute for the head chef and you're acquainted with the owner, right? By any chance, are you aware of the complaints from the other chefs? She said awkwardly. Acting head chef, I had never heard of such a thing. This comes as a surprise. Wait, a substitute? We didn't bring in any substitutes. My father told me that the current chefs can handle everything, even in the absence of the head chef. I said this in surprise. I can't believe it! He's been here for a month already. He was supposed to take over as the head chef, but he hasn't done any work at all. Please verify it with your own eyes. She said that and bowed her head before returning to work. What on earth is going on? My mind was filled with question marks. I don't suspect Aaron, but I can't ignore the voices from the employees. I have to confirm it somehow. The next day, I immediately informed Aaron that I would be going to the hospital and decided to sneak a peek into the kitchen. When I secretly went to observe, I was faced with a sight that was beyond belief. Hey, you guys, bring me some beers. I could hear Aaron's voice saying that. Just make some random snacks. It seemed like Aaron's friend was saying that. The two of them were using the chefs as their servants and doing whatever they pleased since morning. Drinking alcohol in the kitchen, my father would have been furious if he saw that. Suppressing my surprise and anger, What are you doing? I calmly asked, as soon as Aaron saw me. The hospital! Why? He panicked and was flustered. I had some errands and stopped by. Who is this person, by the way? And what have you been doing since morning? I asked, and Aaron seemed to resign himself. My friend lost his job, you see, so I wanted to help him out, and he came to assist for a little while, he explained. Next to Aaron, his friend looked awkward, lowering his head. But to drink alcohol in a place like this? I was speechless and appalled by Aaron and his friend's thoughtless behavior. Their actions were shocking, especially considering the trust I had placed in Aaron. However, causing a scene in the restaurant was out of the question. I sighed and said, I'll ask for more details later, so take your friend and leave. With those words, I kicked them out of the restaurant. In Aaron's absence, I apologized to the chefs and employees. Then I went to the hospital and explained the situation to my father. What? They're interrupting the preparations and having a drinking party? They're really taking advantage. He was infuriated, as if he were about to storm in and confront them. I'm sorry, Dad. I kept apologizing repeatedly and in response, There's no use being angry now. More importantly, Marilyn, are you okay? He showed concern for me, having been betrayed by Aaron. His kindness made tears uncontrollably stream down my face. As I discussed the future with my father, our visiting time came to an end. Am I going to talk to Aaron now? I can't forgive him so easily. What should I do? With those thoughts weighing heavily on my mind, I made my way home with a heavy heart. Hey, Mom, you're alone? My son, who had arrived home earlier, said with surprise. Yeah, I'm alone, but why are you asking? I replied. Dad left just a while ago. I thought he went to pick you up. I even made dinner for everyone. Raoul said with a troubled expression. 
My son Raul is skilled in cooking and attends culinary school. Whenever he has time, he cooks meals for the family. I'm really hungry already. Why don't we eat together first? I acted cheerfully. Honestly, I felt relieved that Aaron wasn't there because I didn't want to see his face. While having a meal with my son, Mom, how's Grandpa's condition? Since I have no school tomorrow, can I go to the hospital with you? My son asked, and we made a promise to go to the hospital together. My son, who adores his grandfather, had been diligently visiting him in the hospital. Talking to my kind son seemed to cleanse my heart. From that day on, I didn't run into Aaron. I was busy taking care of my father and work, and when I returned home, it was already late at night. So I would quickly fall asleep out of exhaustion. On the other hand, Aaron would come home, but I had no idea where he went or what he was doing. I realized that Aaron was avoiding me, but I was too busy to do anything about it. And as months passed without finding time to talk to Aaron, my father passed away. As soon as the funeral was over, I was overwhelmed with deep sadness and became completely worn out. In that state of lethargy, Aaron took the initiative and acted in my place. Despite avoiding each other until now, there were so many things I wanted to say to Aaron all of a sudden, but I couldn't find the energy to say them. Mom, I'll help out at the shop. Take some time to relax. My son spoke up. That's right. Leave the shop to me and Raoul. Aaron also chimed in, but I coldly replied, "I'm sorry, but I can't entrust it to you." Aaron chuckled with a smirk and said, "I understand, but isn't it worrisome to rely only on Raoul? I won't do the same things as before. I won't go into the kitchen," he said. Certainly, I couldn't entrust the shop solely to my student son, but I had no choice but to seek help from Aaron. Who was still part of our family, so temporarily I entrusted the management of the shop to Aaron. Little did I know that this decision would become the biggest mistake of my life. They say people change with money, and Aaron's transformation was evident for all to see. Suddenly, his appearance became flashy, and he started going out for drinks frequently, using business as an excuse. He would come home drunk in the early hours of the morning. When I would reprimand them, he replied, "Shut up. Building connections with fellow professionals is also about attracting more customers. It's absurd for you to complain when I'm doing it for the sake of your shop." He retorted, getting defensive. "But things have been strange lately. Even the clothes you're wearing now, all of them are branded." I pointed out his careless spending. "Listen, you can't represent a long-standing establishment looking shabby." I'm considering the brand image of your shop. With a sigh that showed his annoyance, Aaron continued. "If you don't pay attention to these things, you'll go under," he said. Those words left me exasperated. My father managed to run the shop successfully without dressing up like that. I replied. Then Aaron, "Huh? Your father is just a chef. He's a novice when it comes to running a business with cooking as his only skill." He said, belittling my father. Aaron pulled a beer out of the fridge and poured it into a glass. Do you even understand the current situation? I'm working in your place, you know. Instead of complaining, you should be grateful. He said, looking down on me. Are you serious? I asked. Just think about it. When you were involved in running the business, you couldn't have this kind of lifestyle, right? I have a better sense of management. I feel sorry for your father too. He couldn't enjoy himself before he passed away. Saying that, Aaron laughed and gulped down the beer. Watching him, all the blood drained from my head. I felt a rage so intense that my vision darkened. Sense of management? Cut it out already! I've been handling the bookkeeping for a long time, so I'm well aware of the business situation. Where on earth is all this disposable income coming from? Have you been touching the shop's money? And as soon as I questioned him, "Shut up!" Aaron shouted angrily. At the same time, I became drenched. "What are you doing?" I screamed, not understanding what had happened. Aaron raised his voice. "Who's responsible for our luxury? If you don't like it, then get out!" He stared at me with a terrifying expression. In shock, I stood frozen in place. 
Mom, are you okay? My son said while running up to me. I finally understood the situation when I saw that Raoul had a towel in his hand. Aaron had poured beer all over me. As beer dripped from my hair and the scent of alcohol filled the air, I couldn't stop the tears of frustration. Dad, you've gone too far. My son said to Aaron. Do you think that's okay? You'll end up leaving too. Aaron smirked and tried to intimidate even our son. In that moment, as I tried to intervene, You should be the one to leave, my son said coldly. I was speechless and surprised at that statement from my normally mild-mannered son. Aaron was also upset by the unexpected turn of events. I said leave. And when my son said it again, Aaron's face turned bright red. You dare tell your own parent to leave? You're no longer my son, someone like you. Get out right now, immediately. Aaron shouted at our son, grabbing his arm and trying to drag him towards the entrance. However, our son easily shrugged off Aaron's grip and said, Just stop it already. You're the one who should leave. This is my home, he said. My husband's eyes widened and he froze in place. This house and the business are under my name. I received them as a gift from Grandpa while he was still alive. Upon hearing our son's words, Aaron furrowed his brows. What is this? What's going on? When did this... Aaron panicked, and our son calmly began to explain. While you were avoiding Mom, I discussed with Grandpa what could be done to protect the business and Mom. We came up with this plan to ensure Mom's safety, my son said. Aaron's face turned pale. Who do you think made it possible for you to grow this big? You're forgetting the favor I did in raising you. Aaron spat out his words. I haven't forgotten. I grew up because Grandpa and Mom worked hard for me. Isn't that right? My son calmly replied. What did you do for me, Dad? When it came to tuition fees and career choices, it was Grandpa and Mom who were there for me. You were in no position to tell me to leave. With relentless words from our son, Aaron hung his head and slumped his shoulders. And with an empty expression, he said, How is Marilyn going to run the business in such a situation? You're so reliant on me, yet all you do is talk back. If you apologize now, I'll forgive you. Come on, apologize quickly. He was pressuring us to apologize. Apologize? I was perplexed, but my son intervened. Mom, you don't need to apologize. It's Dad who should apologize. Mom, stay strong. His words snapped me out of it. You're right. I'm not in a state where I should apologize anymore. Saying that, I handed over a document. Huh? What's this? It's the divorce papers. In reality, after discussing the future with my father, I had gone to retrieve the divorce papers. I couldn't forgive being betrayed. But then my father said, you can get a divorce any time. First, think carefully about your own happiness before making a decision. He advised me, and I have been thinking about it all this time. Finally, I had my answer. Please, divorce me. When I said that, Aaron's face contorted and he replied, No way. You must be joking, right? He said. She's not the kind of woman who jokes about something like this. Aaron, you know my mom's personality better than anyone, right? He looked straight into Aaron's eyes. Aaron's face turned even paler than white at my words. As expected, Aaron threw a tantrum and refused to get a divorce. But I had anticipated this outcome. You spent some of the store's money. Did you know that you are guilty of embezzlement? If you won't agree to divorce, then let's fight to the end. When I conveyed my determination to Aaron, he reluctantly agreed to the divorce. The assets we shared as a couple were minimal. The property inherited by my son from his father was not subject to division, so we were able to protect the shop in our family home. As for Aaron, it seemed that he couldn't change his extravagant lifestyle that he had once adopted. He didn't make a serious effort to find a job, but instead accumulated more and more debt. Eventually, he got involved in dangerous activities and strayed from the right path. I have no idea where he is now, and I can't contact him. 
I don't really care, but I hope he's living a strong life somewhere. As for me, I have been helped by my son, employees, and customers around me. Thanks to them, I have managed to keep going. It's painful that things I thought wouldn't change have indeed changed, but I've come to understand that change is inevitable. It's through change that people can grow. With that in mind, I'm working hard on improving my weak point, which is customer service. I learned the hard way that relying on others for customer service resulted in a painful experience. I'll use that lesson to guide my future. From now on, I won't run away from things I can't do. I'll face them head on.